uh, in uh, Memorial Day 1937 at Republic Steel on the southeast side of the city. Uh, workers were peaceably as assembling. Um, police uh, opened fire uh, and also used their batons, as you can see here. Uh, ten workers were killed. Uh, a very uh, diverse group of workers uh, were killed that day. Uh, and about 90 steel workers uh, were injured in this, um, essentially what later in Chicago parlance would be called this, uh, a police riot. Uh, so again, uh, blood on the field. Uh, these uh, immigrant, um, mostly uh, southern eastern European immigrants, some native born Americans, who are these steel workers working at places like Republic Steel, uh, South Works, uh, Wisconsin Steel, all on the southeast side of the city. Uh, and this, this has long been uh, a well-remembered uh, event in local labor history and something that um, uh, Algren uh, thinks is you know, worth mentioning up at the level uh, of Haymarket. Uh, he also uh, broadens his focus uh, beyond uh, Chicago's labor history and uh, looks at, uh, mentions the Eastland disaster of 1915, uh, and uh, he. Um, you know, again, those uh, dispossessed. Uh, nobody remembers, and this is uh, excerpted, but nobody remembers those who went down on the Eastland. The Eastland uh, was a uh, uh, disaster in the Chicago River that killed 844 people uh, in the summer of 1915. Uh, so we just ce celebrated the centennial of it. And uh, essentially workers at Western Electric, many of them Czech immigrants and other Southern Eastern European immigrants, were waving goodbye from the side of the ship. The ship was top heavy uh, and it um, tilted over. Uh, they were supposed to be going on a Western Electric um, uh, trip um, picnic uh, to the other side of the lake over here to Indiana. Uh, and um, the upper right hand corner image uh, is of the Eastland, the ship uh, tilted on its side. The upper left hand corner uh, image, you know, is not unlike uh, some of those images from from Oklahoma City in the uh, 1990s, uh, and this is a, a cover of the Chicago Tribune in the lower left-hand corner. Um, and so again, those dispossessed uh, people, uh, workers, immigrant workers, uh, in this case primarily Czech, um, really uh, having being powerless uh, to um, the, the owning class and the ship uh, tipping over because of essentially its faulty design. Um, all right, uh, then uh, of course, I'm sure many people know uh, that uh, Algren was a huge uh, White Sox fan. Uh, and in City on the Make, he brings together his own persecution uh, in the context of the 1950s uh, McCarthy era and uh, the White Sox 1919 Black Sox scandal. Uh, just for those of you who don't have to talk about the Black Sox, Black Sox scandal all the time like I do, uh, in 1919, um, Chicago had teams that were good enough to actually lose on purpose. Uh, and, uh, um, so uh, as far as we can tell, some players from the 1919 team, a really good team uh, that had also won the World Series in 1917, uh, took some bribes from gamblers uh, who were hoping to bet on the underdog Cincinnati Reds uh, and uh, make a killing, and that the uh, Shoeless Joe Jackson and other players would receive payments that would far exceed their, their annual payment uh, as um, uh, baseball players. Of course, in an era when salaries are not like what they are today, and uh, an era when men like Shoeless Joe Jackson had uh, jobs in the offseason. Uh, one of the great pitchers from this team uh, was a stock boy, essentially, at one of the Loop department stores. Uh, so Algren, of course, the, the White Sox come up a lot in uh, Chicago City on the make, but I like this brief quote. Uh, the Black Sox were the Reds of October, and mine was guilt of association, and the charge was conspiracy. So again, uh, the guilt by association of some of the players who were kicked out of baseball in 1919, of course, Algren's guilt by association uh, during the McCarthy era uh, Red Scare of the 1950s. So kind of interestingly bringing his uh, own experience together with uh, his childhood heroes like Shoeless Joe, Claude Lefty Williams, um, Buck Weaver, and so forth. 
So one of my favorite uh, quotes um, comes uh, kind of in the, uh, maybe the, towards the end of Chicago City on the Make. Uh, and it's, uh, I'll read it, uh, and I've also made it a little bit shorter, and then we'll just look at some images and, and uh, of these folk, and then I'll, I'll be done. Uh, so uh, these are the, he lists, uh, interestingly, uh, a group of those who have control the levers of power uh, in Chicago. Uh, and so, uh, of course, town here is referring to Chicago. Town of international clowns, where the transcontinental Barnum and Bailey buffoons stand on their heads for a picture on the sports page, a round of applause, a ward full of votes, a dividend, or a friendly smile. Big Bill Thompson, Sewell, Sewell Avery, Joe Boharness, and Oliver J. Dragon, and of course, the one, uh, the only one on earth, the inventor of modern warfare, our very own dime store Napoleon, Colonel McGooseneck. Uh, so, uh, again, just looking at our collections, Sewell Avery on the left, um, uh, chairman of the board of uh, Montgomery Ward. This is probably the most famous picture of Sewell Avery, who who during World War II was defying uh, labor laws and had to be removed from his uh, loop office, you can see here, by military personnel. So, uh, an owner. Uh, Big Bill Thompson, uh, twice mayor of Chicago, cowboy hat-wearing uh, yacht, uh, yachtsman, uh, who also took uh, campaign donations from Al Capone. Uh, and uh, again, uh, one of those in Algren's mind who has control of the levers of power. Um, not often do you get to uh, uh, put together on a slide um, Joe Boharness, who's the uh, founder of In Chicago, the White Circle League, and puppets uh, in the lower right-hand corner. Of course, uh, many of you may remember KFO, the Kuko Fran and Ollie show, uh, based here in Chicago. Uh, at the Chicago History Museum, we have the puppets, we have stage pieces, we have drawings, photographs, uh, and the television shows uh, on the film reels. Uh, so he mentions, uh, Algren mentions um, Oliver J. Dragon. So Kukla being the pol uh, puppet in the upper left hand of the lower right hand corner and then Oliver J. Dragon there. Kind of bringing in these kids characters. But then a pretty sinister guy, Joe Boharness, uh, outside of his office in the loop, uh, the White Circle League of America Incorporated, Joseph Boharness president there in kind of the middle of the slide. Uh, he was uh, the founder and leader of the White Circle League, which was very active in Chicago uh, in the 40s, excuse me, 40s and 50s in keeping the city segregated. Uh, uh, especially, actually, not very far from here, uh, Trumbull Park Homes riots, the White Circle League was very much involved there uh, in other uh, housing segregation cases uh, earlier in the um, uh, in the 40s. Uh, he was, and as uh, Bill Savage points out in his uh, version of the uh, Chicago City on the Make, uh, he um, took a uh, free speech um, case to the Supreme Court and uh, lost. Um, uh, but he believed uh, it was his free speech to pass out, uh, and we actually have some of them in our collections, uh, these very uh, racist tracks uh, hoping to keep the city segregated, especially Chicago Housing Authority buildings. So of course there's Colonel Magusnik. Um, it was very hard to pass up this picture of him playing polo uh, to kind of fit in with Algren's view of him. Uh, of course the Tribune magnate uh, and um, uh, uh, arch conservative of the 1950s um, and uh, um, really one of those iconic people associated with Chicago whom clearly uh, uh, Auburn hated uh, and so really holds him up as that sort of parag paragon of someone who has uh, controls of the uh, levers of power. Um, not to leave on complete, uh, to end on complete uh, depression, um, there is of course Jane Addams who Algren calls um, a do-gooder. Uh, and uh, so you do have sort of um, kind of a bifurcated city where you have um, uh, Colonel McGooseneck on the previous slide, but you also have Jane Addams, someone who is uh, looking for those levers of power and to give them to the working class. Uh, and uh, to make uh, a more equitable society. 
Jane Addams Hull House, founded in 1889 in, the, in what's now the University of Illinois at Chicago area, which was uh, a large sweatshop district uh, in the late 19th and the early 20th century. Uh, the idea before there were professional social workers uh, that uh, social workers would essentially come to a neighborhood and work with, in this case, immigrant populations around issues like language ac acquisition, uh, finding a job, problems, problems at work, domestic violence, um, uh, disease, uh, child, uh, child welfare, child working laws, uh, and a whole host of uh, progressive reforms uh, that that earned her the the do-gooder title. Um, and uh, again, quoting from Algren, and I'm just about done. Uh, Yet the do-gooders still go doggedly forward, making the hustlers struggle for their gold week in and week out year after year, uh, once or twice a decade tossing an unholy fright into the boys. And since, and since it's a ninth inning town, the ball game never being over till the last man is out, it, remain, it remains Jane Addams Town as well as Big Bill's. Of course, Big Bill Thompson. Uh, um, and then just wrapping up, Jane Addams too knew that Chicago's blood was Hustler's blood, uh, but she was still able to be uh, a do-gooder. Okay. All right, um, that's that's everything I have uh, for my comments. Uh, I know we're going to have, <coughs> excuse me, a, a panel group here in a moment, uh, but I don't know if you have any specific questions about sort of Algren's take on Chicago history. Otherwise, I think we'll probably move right into the panel segment. Well, how about a hand? Yes. I have a question. I've been doing research lately at the History Museum, uh, uh -huh. Historical Society, and I wonder why the first thing you see as you walk in the museum is a six or seven generation family tree of the Pritzker family, and I wonder what Nelson all going to think about that. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, the Pritzker family, uh, it's from the Tawani Foundation, and I, I think it's, uh, they're, they're, it's pretty obvious why it's there. Uh, we need money, and they have money to give us. Uh, and so, yes, um, we have uh, Robert R. McCormick Theater, where we've shown uh, um, movies, uh, the documentary film, one of the documentary films about Nelson Algren. Uh, and I pointed out that Nelson